Ah, uh, go blow your heads, both of you, said Haggard. Hey, you're a wizard. Hi, this is little Annabelle, and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be going over the fourth chapter of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I do realize that I'm probably the only person doing something very similar to this, but I have thoughts. And I hope you're here for those thoughts. I hope you're all here for the ride, and let's just get into the video. Boom! The knock at the door was so loud. Deli wakes up asking where the fan was. Stupidly. I'd probably think the same thing. Um, it, I'm barely listening though. Oliver scoots into the room with a rifle. Everyone now knows what was in that long box that he was carrying. He demands who's at the door and then smash! Right? The door falls to the ground and falls off the hand just Flat, flat to the ground, right? And all of a sudden, there is a giant standing in the doorway. It has to be scared for everyone. Yeah. Shaggy hair, a wild beard. Yes. So he scoots his way into the door. I imagine. I imagine him, right? Now that I'm reading this. <laughs> like, Everyone's kind of like, what, what's going on, right? And all of a sudden, this giant just asks for a cup of tea because he had a long journey and he just ran off. And so he maneuvers his way to the counter and found he is. And Dudley just, he runs and hides behind his parents because he's terrified, cowardly, I guess. I, and then this giant just looks at Harry with the long his beady eyes and says he has the two since he was a baby and just looks like his dad and with his mom's eyes and this will be not the first time we hear this is a, a theme that is throughout the book. As I was reading this again and I watched movies a lot because they're covered he confuses Dudley for Harry in the movies, but not in the book. I found that very interesting. Vernon kind of makes a rasping noise and demands the giant to leave at once. And he's pointing the gun at Vernon. And all of a sudden the giant just grabs the gun from Uncle Vernon and like bends the barrel of the rifle like it was rubber and throws it to the to the corner on the ground. And then he wishes Harry a very happy birthday and he pulls out a smush cake from his pockets. And Harry kind of like, I'm sure it was in his head, like, I meant to say thank you. But it came out as the party. Don't blame me, Harry. There's this giant who was like, I knew your mom and dad. <laughs> You look like your dad and have your mom's eyes and happy birthday. Like, I would be terrified. And so now we learn this name of this giant as Rubius Haggard Keeper of the Peace at Hogwarts. And so he lights the fire mantlas magically and pulls out. He's emptying out his pockets and some sort of cups come out, a kettle, a poker for the fire, and then, like, kind of, next thing Harry knows is the hut is filled with smell sausages. Dudley, being the kid that he is and always hungry, kind of wiggles his way kind of towards it. Like, and his mom and dad like pulled him back, and Vernon's like, You don't take anything from that giant big hairy boy. Hagrid, of course, is like, He doesn't need it, right? And so Harry. Finally takes it. He's starving, and they were delicious. 
although when you're starving, a lot of things taste wonderful, right? But Hagrid, you know, introduces himself as, you know, a pure case of Hogwarts. And Harry's still baffled, right? I would be too, Harry. I know nothing. Of course, Hagrid just assumes that Harry knows something about something, right? And knows about Hogwarts. Harry doesn't. Like, Hagrid is just like shocked, I'm sure, because he wasn't expecting it. Harry's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Harry's like, you don't need to be sorry. And he describes her scissors, so he's like, he doesn't know And he's like, you knew Harry wasn't receiving his letters, of course, but he knew nothing about Hogwarts that just seemed a little odd and crazy to him. And so the Dursleys now are back and forth towards the wall and cowering. And Hagrid's just kind of being a little more angry, and him, I say bigger, but we've all been angry and just kind of seem to like pop up your chest and just try to fill yourself up. Just seems to be filling out the hot, right? He's a giant, so this is like more terrifying. And Harry, of course, is like, I know stuff. He's confused, he spent his school. It's like, I know math and all that crazy stuff. Like basic stuff that you know probably this age knows and should know. And of course, Hyrule's like, do you want to know about our world? I mean, your world. I mean, your parents' world. And Harry's like still baffled. It's like what world? And then Harry's more angry. It looks like he's going to explode. And booming voice is like, Dursleys. Of course, okay? And Uncle Ferdy kind of makes this, like, kind of sound what it sounds like. Right? It's probably like, I, like, shocked and terrified and just. Dear Dursleys, you knew this was probably coming. You tried. But this is karma. I'm pretty sure it's karma. Just. Going to put this out. Um, and Hagrid, because something, surely you know something about your mom and dad. You're famous, they're famous. And Harry's like, my parents weren't famous, were they? Hagrid's getting more angry. Uncle Vern's it's like, he wants Hagrid to stop, right? And he doesn't want to have Hagrid tell Harry a thing. And he's just baffled that they never told Harry a thing. And because, once again, remember, and we'll go over this, Hagrid's one that fought, brought Harry to the Dursleys. And Dumbledore left a letter explaining everything. I wonder if they still have a letter on the string. Curious. Harry still is baffled and confused on what the hell's going on. And Uncle Vernon, of course, shouts. Stop, I forbid you. Sir, you're a size human. A little overweight. And you're going up against the giants. Good luck. Hagrid threatens them and he stumbles out. It's like, here, you're a wizard. Harry's still back, of course. Harry. So listen to what's going on. Of course, it's like, Harry's like, I'm like, Harry's, of course, a good one with his mom and dad. And he takes the letter from Hagrid, right? And it says, Mr. H. Potter, the floor, cut on the rock, the seat. So he reads the letter, and at the top it says, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and Master Alice Dumbledore, Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief Warlock, Supreme Mongolop International Confederation of Wizards. And it says, Dear Mr. Potter, we're pleased to inform you you've been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find the enclosed list of necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1. We await your owl no later than July 31st. Sincerely, Minerva Potter. Deputy headmistress. And of course, after reading the letter, 
Harry, shock and all, and has emotions. Don't blame me, Harry. Hagrid is reminded to bring the letter to Dumbledore saying that he's with Harry. He'll be able to get supplies the next day. The weather's kind of bad. And he, but where he does this, he pulls an owl, owl a live owl from his pocket with a parchment quill. And then he writes this letter and then attaches it out and sends the owl off. And Harry's like, is this normal? Is this a phone call to them? <laughs> so bad, well, he still doesn't know, right? Dursley tells Hagrid he's not going. And Harry's like, a great muggle like you is going to stop him. I don't think so. And of course, Hagrid's muggles are what we call a magic mode. And Fern's like, we promised that we're going to stop this out of him. And of course, Harry's like, you knew I was a wizard. And I got to read this. It's probably one of my favorite monologues of all times, especially in this book. Mew? Shrieks and No, of course we knew. How could we not be sure my dad's sister being what she was? Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that school and came home every vacation with her pockets full of frog spawns, turning teacups in her rats. I was the only one who knew she was a freak, but for my mother and father, oh no, it was really this, really that. They're proud of having a witch in the family. This is just jealousy in my eyes, right? I have thoughts. So, her sister Lily, Harry's father, was all of a sudden special. And she wasn't special. So now they're stuck with Harry, right? And they have a son. And I think them treat Dudley the way they do is to use like, this kid's gonna be special. And we're going to treat Harry not so special as a revenge for how she felt as a child. Okay. And she's like, so like, then she goes, like, my sister got married to a Potter boy. They got married and they got themselves split up. And we ended up with you. Harry gets angry and says, You said my parents died in a car crash. And Hagrid also gets angry. He's like, a car crash killed Lily James Potter? I don't think so. It's like everyone in our world knows who Harry is. And then of course Harry, Harry's curious. He's like, what? And of course Hagrid didn't, he knew nothing. He knew nothing very sure. Like, Hagrid's like, he's like, I'm not sure if I'm the right person to explain this to you. But you can't just go off the Hogwarts not knowing how, right? Everyone kind of knows what happened. They know who you are. He threw three of those records and he went to Voldemort is, and Voldemort being the only one who heard Dumbledore and Lillian and Voldemort being as bad as the guy he got following. And meanwhile, Lillian James Harry's parents were the good people and well, and hired surprise that they didn't try to Paul well, didn't try to recruit them but maybe he didn't even try because that they're really close to Dumbledore and so on Halloween night Harry's about one and they and Baltimore shows up to the house to kill them and no one knows why although we do know later that there's a prophecy and he knew Harry was like, you know, so he wants to go kill Harry to stop this prophecy. But we do know later that my name is blanking out. Gosh, what's the other boy? I don't remember. Gosh, as I'm recording this, I'm looking this up because my name is blanking out. I just, gosh. All right, yeah. So as we know later on, it could be Neville Longbomb because he's also a July baby. That's always a fun thought, actually. Um, so anyway, it's like, and Harry just now, like, learned that Harry, like, learns a green flash, but now this green flash is a little more vividly, and he hears a high wolf laugh. And his, 
And so Hagrid explains that, um, have you ever wondered where you got your scar from? This new scar, this scar that's been tarred by dark magic. And, you know, he's watching him. And Uncle Vern's back there being wondered. And he tells Harry not to listen. And it was like, I accept that you're weird, weird, so, but it's nothing good. Like, being was soft that out. And Harry points his umbrella at Vernon and streaks back to the wall. So, and Harry's more curious, asks Harry what happened. Like, no one knows. Harry doesn't think, yeah, not like people think he died, but Harry's like, I don't think he got nothing human left in him. Of course, we now know that he made essentially a horcrux, and when you make a horcrux, you leave part of your soul behind. So, at that point, he probably was a shell of the person, right? Like, he just kind of disappeared the night that he killed Harry's parents, and like, Harry survived, and Harry thinks it's his greatest time, maybe, but a lot of Voldemort's followers came back to the good side. And so, but Harry's still like, I don't think I'm a wizard, right? Harry's like, think about it. Have strange things happen, like, when you're scared or angry. And Harry all of a sudden, like, flashes through this, right? It's, like, and we've gone over this, like, his hair's grown back when he's got haircut. He's Dudley has chased him, etc., etc., right? And those are all times when the glass vanishing the last chapter. Was the last chapter? No, it was the second chapter. And like, and Hagrid's looking at him like, and Uncle Vern protesting <laughs> And he's like, he's going to Stonewall High. And he's like, I've seen this life. He needs loads of like, books and things. It's like, we're not paying for it. And he's not going back. He's not going to be talked by an old geezer. <laughs> And that's when Harry decided never insult Professor Dumbledore in front of me. And he points the umbrella to Dudley, and Dudley gets a pink tail out of his trousers. And the jurors lose the streak, and they run into the bedroom that Mr. and Mrs. Dursley were staying in. And Harry looks at Harry and like, I'm Mr. I'm the whole pig, but I suppose he already is essentially one. But, you know, like we think that Hagrid's broken wand is concealed into the umbrella, right? And that's why you always can't, you know, this carries it in. We know broken wands don't work as well, but it still thinks it's always fine. And he's like, I would mention this. He looks at Harry, he's like, there's not much in the same at Hogwarts and that's just new kind of strictly speaking. I was allowed to do something to come follow you and get you. And he mentions that he's he was expelled, but he doesn't want to get into it. So and he throws Harry's his coat and it's like he can keep warm under this night. And so that's where the chapter ends. We're getting to the exciting part, people. I'm excited. Are you excited? The first two chapters are always slower. So that'll be it. Um thanks for watching and listening to me, I had thoughts. Let me know what you think down below in this chapter. If you made this far, leave a big emoji in the comments for me, please. Thanks. And if there's any, like, theories or anything you want to hear my thoughts on, that would be fantastic. And that would be it for today. Um, if you don't mind, please do all the YouTube things. It would really help me out and I appreciate it. Until next time. I am Lil Annabelle, and stay safe, be strong, I love you.